Is Hitman worth watching? Today I'm going to look at the good and the bad in order to answer that question. Welcome to Box of Chocolates, where you never know what you're gonna get. Hitman is on Netflix, and while that often will not give me much confidence in a movie, the fact that this is the new film from Richard Linklater, and that it's starring Glenn Powell, who's been getting a lot of attention lately ever since Top Gun Maverick, and a lot of the early reactions to this film from people who saw it at festivals and stuff like that, I was looking forward to this quite a bit. And I didn't even know what it was about. This whole time, I assumed it was about a hitman. How foolish of me, because no, it's not. It's based on a true story. Glenn Powell's character is a professor who also part-time works for the police, and he will essentially go talk to people who are trying to hire a hitman, but he's wearing a wire, so those people get caught for trying to solicit a murder. He ends up meeting Adria Arjona's character, who wants her husband killed because he's a piece of shit, and they end up starting a romance, and there's a complex web of lies. That is a really interesting premise for a rom-com. And overall, I enjoyed this movie quite a bit. Not as much as I honestly expected to, because I did hear a lot of hype for quite a while from people who have seen this early, but I did still enjoy it. So we're gonna talk about some of the negatives I had later, but I do want to start off with all of the good things, and I have to start with Glenn Powell, because this guy has serious movie star energy about him. I can't wait to see him in Twisters later this year and anything else that he does. Him playing so many different characters in this movie, his character really gets into this role of the hitman that he's pretending to be. So he'll dress up and put on different accents and act like a different type of hitman to each client that he goes to talk to. So he gets to show off a wide range of his acting abilities. There are so many layers to who's lying to who in this movie, who knows what, what kind of story he has to keep up with any individual person, who he's pretending to be, has he been pretending to be this person for so long that it's basically become who he is, that his performance here is fantastic. And his character is really interesting as well because he's primarily a professor of psychology and philosophy, and he's kind of a nerdy guy. They try to sell you on the idea that he is seen as maybe not all that attractive, which is just, you can't just put glasses on Glenn Powell and be like, oh yeah, now he's like a nerdy loner. It's still Glenn Powell, come on. But they do what they can. His character doesn't have a lot going on in his life. He's maybe not the most passionate person. And so when he has this opportunity to turn himself into other people and portray these other people, he's a natural at it. He really gets into it because it allows him to let out these more interesting versions of himself, like become people that are more interesting than he is. And that's another reason as to why Glenn Powell's performance is so good, because he's playing this character whose name is Gary, and Gary is putting on a performance portraying all of these other characters. And so there's all the times when he's committed to the performance, when you might feel that slipping a little bit and he's resorting back into being Gary. And so Glenn Powell has to balance all of that. And it's an interesting study of human psychology asking the question, can people change who they are fundamentally? If you act like you're somebody that you want to be for long enough, will you become that person? Were you maybe that person all along and you just needed the outlet to realize it? Adria Arjona is really good as well, and their chemistry is off the charts. Like from the moment these two meet each other, I thought they were just gonna start fucking immediately. <laughs> their chemistry is electric. They were really cute together but also they're wrapped up in this complex web of lies where she wanted to kill her husband and she wanted him to do it and he's not actually really a hitman and the police were listening into all of that and he's trying to keep seeing her without the police knowing, without her knowing that he's not a hitman, but also the husband is an angry asshole and so you gotta deal with him and worry about him too and so there's so many layers to what's going on to where I really like them together, but this situation is so fucked up that you know 
it's not going to go well. Like there are going to be some serious consequences to this. And so for a while, I found it pretty unpredictable because you know things are gonna go wrong at some point. And I just didn't know how. And a lot of that unpredictability leads to some good comedy. A lot of the comedy comes from the absurdity of the situations that the characters find themselves in and the kind of awkwardness of them trying to get themselves out of it. And it also leads to some good tension. There are scenes where it feels like people are about to get busted for all of the lies they've been telling and I was not sure how they'd get out of it. And the actors are able to deliver performances that are extremely strong in some of these scenes as these conflicts come to a head. And the way they resolve is very satisfying. And I really enjoyed all of that. I think it balances the tone very well, being a rom-com with characters you wanna to see together, but also characters who are not the best people. Like you see our main character, Gary, get more into this hitman persona, and you're always kind of wondering, how far will he take that? How far will these characters go? How dark will it get? And so I like that it has that extra dark little edge to it. As for some of my negatives with the film, the biggest thing is that there are quite a few scenes that are basically just telling the audience the message of the film. Like I said, he's a psychology professor, so you have quite a few scenes of him teaching class, and they're just talking about psychology, and they're kind of just explaining the point very unsubtly directly to the audience. There's a scene where he talks to his ex-wife and she tells us about how he used to be and how he's not the most passionate guy and maybe he can change, can people change? And I liked these scenes. I thought they were interesting ideas being explored in this story through characters that I found interesting, actors that were doing a really good job. The dialogue was well written, but these scenes are very much just telling the audience the point of the movie. So when I rewatch this movie, I'm gonna be thinking about all of his scenes with Adria Arjona, all of the scenes where he's pretending to be a hitman and catching all of these people, all of the funny parts. And then when I actually sit down rewatching it, I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, also there were all of these extra scenes as well where the movie is just telling me the point of itself they were fine but they were definitely the lesser types of scenes in the film it's not the most visually interesting film in the world and that's okay that's a pretty minor thing it's mainly a rom-com it doesn't need to be the most visually impressive thing but i was wondering why even though i liked this movie quite a bit i would re-watch it i recommend it I really did hear a lot of extreme hype for this movie, and I walked away thinking it was good, and I wondered why I, I didn't love it as much as some other people seem to. And I think one thing, even though I do like how the tone was balanced, is the tone, because I think just for me personally, if it had leaned further into either completely absurdist, goofy comedy surrounding all of these misunderstandings, or extremely dark surrounding the hitman plot i think it would have stood out to me more if it had leaned really hard into one of those as it is it's a very good balance it makes for a unique rom-com but that made it stand out a little bit less to me that's just about my taste i would take wacky comedy or dark hitman story over rom-com most of the time if the rom-com has some funny parts, which this does, and has that dark edge, which it does, then cool, good movie, but just not like favorite of the year or anything like that. I did enjoy Hitman. I'm gonna give it a three and a half out of five. It's on Netflix. I definitely recommend checking it out if it seems like a good time to you. It's worth watching just to sell you on Glenn Powell, if nothing else, because it shows that he has a great future ahead of him as an actor and it is a really solid premise with some fun character work good comedy and a much more intricate plot than you're typically gonna get from a rom-com but that's all i have to say about that please let me know your thoughts on hitman this was just my opinion so i would love to hear yours down in the comments below if you enjoyed the video leave a thumbs up subscribe if you'd like to see more from me got more reviews coming we have inside out 2 coming out soon that should be fun thank you so much and i hope to see you for the next one